For more on this groundbreaking discovery and how it could change our ideas of human development, let's go to Stephen Churchill via Skype. He's a professor of evolutionary anthropology at Duke Trinity College of Arts and Sciences. Professor, welcome. Hello, Asie. Thank you very much for having me on today. So let's talk about the significance here. A lot of excitement, but for those of us who are not scientists and anthropologists, explain why this is such a big deal. What's really great about this discovery is that we have lots and lots of bones, more than 1,500 specimens, uh, representing, as you said, about 15 individuals. So uh, we're getting a very, very good look at these guys. Uh, we have most of the parts of the anatomy represented. So we're getting a very detailed look at a species which appears to be right in the middle between uh, sort of what you might call the ape men, members of the genus Australopithecus, and true humans like Homo erectus. Um, and that's really exciting because this is a, a time period in human evolution where we don't have a lot of fossils. So these bone fragments were found in a narrow cave 30 meters underground. Explain to us how they had to find the right people to go down this cave. Well, the, the circumstances to excavate these fossils were so difficult, we needed people who had caving experience but who could also excavate. We needed people who had um, emergency medical uh, training because if someone got hurt down there, it would be very difficult to get help to them. Uh, and they needed to be people who were you know, not claustrophobic, who could work in really, really difficult and dangerous conditions. And they had to be small enough to get down there because um, to get into the chamber, you had to be able to wriggle through an opening which was only about, say, seven inches or about 18 centimeters wide uh, and 36 feet uh, deep. So we needed small-bodied and experienced people who could get down there and excavate these fossils for us. Professor, they're saying that uh, Homo naledi buried its dead, a uniquely human ritual. How do they know that by just looking at these bones? Well, our geologists have worked very hard, and they're convinced that there has never been an opening closer than the current opening. We can rule out that carnivores like leopards or lions killed these uh, early humans and dragged them into the cave. We can rule out that it was a catastrophic death of a social group. We can rule out just about every explanation except that members of the social group were dragging bodies into this deep, dark chamber and dropping them down this, this narrow little shaft. Um, so, you know, it, it's basically a matter of elimination, and we can eliminate just about every other explanation. And it leaves us with the idea that they were purposefully disposing of their dead. And when you look at these bones and fossils, what strikes you the most as an expert? What's so interesting about them is they're a complete mishmash of features. In some respects, they're very, very modern. Their feet look like our feet. Their, uh, their hands in almost every detail look like our hands. In other respects, they're very primitive. They have um, a, almost an ape-like trunk, um, an ape-like arm. Their fingers were very curved. Uh, and they had very small brains. Their brains were about the size of oranges. And do you, do you think, Professor, they're going to find more bones and fossils in the same cave? And when it comes to human evolution, have we just only scratched the surface here? There are thousands more fossils of these, uh, these hominins down in the chamber that we have not yet been able to excavate. So we will learn a lot more about them. And yes, the more that we discover, the more we realize that our, our family tree was a very bushy and very diverse tree. And um, the more we find fossils, the more questions it raises. Fascinating discussion, extraordinary discovery. Professor Stephen Churchill, thank you so much for your time, sir. Thank you.